Hi, I'm Bill Busby and I'm here with my homebrew computer, Magic One. Uh, this video is a response to a request from David Lovett of the YouTube channel Usabi Electric. Among other things, David's been restoring an old Centurion mini computer, and as part of that effort, he put up a video showing a bring up effort that involved displaying Hello World on a Centurion's console. However, during that effort, David mistyped Hello World as Hello World, uh, missing two letters. Hello Earl then became somewhat of a meme, and David put out a call for other interesting and unique computers to replicate displaying Hello Earl. And well, I think Magic One qualifies as unique or interesting, so I thought I'd give it a shot. If you aren't familiar with Magic One, it's a computer that I designed and built from the ground up. It features a custom CPU with an instruction set of my own design, and it's built from several hundred old TTL chips connected with thousands of wire-wrapped wires across five boards. It's a pretty capable machine for a homebrew. It's a multi-user, multitasking, and runs the old Minix operating system. It supports virtual memory, demand paging, user and supervisor modes, and external interrupts. Each process can address 64 kbytes of code and 64 kbytes of data, and that's all mapped into a physical address space via 2K pages. Um, it communicates with the world using two serial ports and an Ethernet interface based on the WizNet W5300 chip. And it's also got a simple IDE interface for hard drive support. Magic One has been running for almost 20 years now. My bring up effort for it happened in the spring of 2004 and I've kept it running pretty much continuously since then. It's connected to the internet where it serves a simple web page at uh, magicone.org and allows anyone to tell that in and play around. And I'll put some info in the description if you want to learn more. Okay, back to the task at hand. At this point in Magic One's life, displaying just Hello World on the console would be a pretty trivial matter and probably not that interesting. I've got three C compilers for Magic One, a full ANSI C compiler that runs in a cross-compiler environment, and then two native C subset compilers. Um, I've also got a Pascal compiler that I wrote actually back in college 40 years ago for the Z80 and then ported it over to Magic One, uh, which makes me feel kind of old. And there's also uh, Tom Pittman's old Tiny Basic. Um, you could additionally use the VI editor to type in a assembly version of Hello World uh, on Magic One and then assemble and link it and run it on the console using the VT100 terminal. But all of those things don't seem to me to be in the spirit of bring up uh, because even doing those things now, uh, Magic One uh, would have, would be going through uh, to write something through the serial ports, multiple task switches, uh, handling interrupts, going between user and supervisor modes, and pretty advanced functionality that's pretty far away from the notion of the simple bring up. Back in 2004, when I did my original bring up of Magic One, uh, that involved me burning an EEPROM uh, with a simple Fibonacci function. And then I used this uh, little front panel mock-up to uh, run the program uh, single-stepped and with a slow clock uh, to you know cycle through the instructions until I discovered that the correct answer actually showed up in register A like it was supposed to. And for what it's worth, I, I recorded that, uh, that original bring up attempt and I'll put a link in the description below if you want to see what it was like 20 years ago when Magic One first came alive. Anyway, for this Hello World experience, let's just forget the VT100 and, and Minix and go back to the bare bones. Uh, we'll do our Hello World on Magic One by toggling in the program on the front panel and uh, seeing the, the, uh, the results come out uh, on the front panel display. So let me uh, move the camera around and uh, we'll get to it. Okay, well let's uh, briefly talk about the front panel. Um, the LEDs here show us what's happening inside of Magic One, and then the switches allow us to uh, examine and alter the machine state. So right now, Magic One is running at a little over four megahertz, so the LEDs are flashing much too quickly to see what's really going on. So let's start by pausing execution. 
what I just did was I switched the DMA request line. Uh, this signal tells the CPU to give up control of the data and address buses and then hang in a tight microcode loop. And so now the front panel is in control of the buses and we can use the switches, here this is the, the address bus, to examine what's in memory. So at address zero, it looks like we've got a hex byte of uh, 84. And let's see, at address one, uh, a hex of 7E, or sorry, 1E, and so on. So you can flip the address switches to see what's in memory at the different locations. And then similarly, I've got a knob up here that I can turn that will show what's in various registers, internal registers in the machine. And uh, that's, that's the basics of the front panel. But one additional thing we can do with the front panel is we can actually write to memory. So if we set up the correct address here, and then the value that we want to place in memory, and then push the red button, that will actually write a value in memory. Um, but before we start entering the program, I need to do a few other things. Uh, first, we want to slow the machine down to the point that we can see individual instruction executions. So in the back of Magic 1, I've got another switch that can select from different clock sources. Uh, we'll use the variable speed slow clock, which is basically a 555 timer circuit that can run from less than one hertz to several hundred hertz. And I've also got a jumper that replaces the system boot ROM with SRAM. And then I'll also want to hit the reset button, because on reset, Magic 1 will start execution at address zero with interrupts and virtual memory disabled. So I'm going to go uh, turn around to the back of the machine and do that right now. Okay, we're back, and I've uh, I've gone move I've I've moved it over to use the slow clock, and you can see the clock uh, blinking here at a relatively slow pace. Uh, but I'll go ahead and stop it because it's kind of irritating. Uh, and let's talk before we key the program in. Let's talk a little bit about what it's going to do. So, um, Magic One's front panel also includes a section here for a postcode display, and this was something I used uh, during Bring Up, but basically. It's a, a location um, in the computer that's hardwired to a particular address, FFC0, and if you write something to that address, it will show up here in the postcode display. So for our Hello World program, we're going to write out the string, Hello World, one character at a time, and have it show up in the postcode section of the front panel. And, um, and that's what the program we're going to punch in does, and I'll... Show the program here. I'm sure that's that's something that's not going to be readable very well, but I'll put a description uh, in the link below. Uh, but uh, basically, the program will go ahead and initialize uh, the global data pointer, pick up the address of the hello world message, and then it'll go through a loop that will first zero out the postcode display and then write in the next character in the hello world string and loop back until it runs through the string, and then when it's completely done, it'll just start over again. And then here's the data for our hello world, uh, and that's going to be the uh, the values of the ASCII characters that we're going to be sending to the postcode display. All right, so there's 33 bytes in all, and uh, let's finally get around to start flipping some switches. Uh, so here we go. Okay, we're back again, and this is actually take three. Uh, I continue to make mistakes when I try to toggle this program in, and you'll understand why after you watch here a bit. But now we're back from uh, switching over to the slow clock, and you can see that we're, we're pulsing fairly slow. Uh, but I'll go ahead and stop that uh, because it's a little bit irritating to see. And now we will go ahead and try again to correctly uh, toggle the program in. Uh, so bear with me. So at address 0, uh, we want a 7A. So 7A, and write that in. At address 1, it's all zeros. 2, B6. A, B, 6. Address 3 is a 70, 74. That's correct. At address four, 
is all zeros. At address 5 is an 18. 18. At address 6, a 78. 78. Okay. At 7 is all zeros. At 8, it's D0. D0. Okay. Address 9 is all Fs. At address A is C0. C0. Okay. At B is 13. 13. At C is all zeros. And at D is all zeros. And at E is a 95. 95. At F, we have an F, F3. Okay. At 10, we have D0. D0. Okay. At 11 is FF. At 12, C0. C0. Okay. At 13, we've got uh, 77. 77. At 14, all, ze all zeros. At 15, a 1. At 16, 84. 84. At 17, EE. -E. E -E. Okay, and at 18, now we start putting in the character data, and this is the ASCII code for capital H, which is 4. 8, 48. At 19, we've got a 65, which is the E. At 1A, we have a 6C, which is an L. And we've got another L at 1B. And at 1C, we've got a 6 F at 1D, we've got uh, 72. 72. At 1E, a 6C. 6C. Six C. At 1F, we have a 64. 64. And then at 20, we have our exclamation point at the end, which is a 21, 21. And then our final character is a null terminator for the string, and that's all zeros. So, whew. so if that is working, then if I type that incorrectly, we should get our program now. I'll go ahead and start it, and we want to look at the postcode section here. And when something shows up there, I'll stop it so we can verify that we're getting our message out right. So I'll restart the clock and then turn the machine loose. And now it's beginning to execute code. And we'll want to watch for the postcode display up here. It'll take it a little while to get there. Oh, there's our first one. Let me stop. Uh, so we have our first character, a 48, which is the capital H. All right, so let's continue. And that should go away shortly, and we should see a 65. Okay, it went away, and now we've got 65, that's the E. And that should go away in a bit, it did. And we should see a 6C for the L. There we are, H-E-L. And that should go away and come back with another 6C, another L. And it does, H-E-L-L. -L. And then we should get a 6F here in a bit which is the O, and there it is, O, and then a 72 for the R, 
And we go, 72R, another 6C for the L. And there we got it. And a 64 for the D. And there we go, the D. And then finally, the exclamation point of 21. All right, so that's it. Successful Hello World. Um, I'll speed the clock up a little bit so we can get some nice uh, blinky light patterns. And then I'll uh, move the camera around and we'll get some uh, closing remarks. So let me speed it up here a bit. Okay, there we go. So now we can see some nicer blinky lights. And I'll move the camera and uh, come right back. Okay, uh, a few words before I go. Um, I saw David's request video more than a week ago. But when I first tried to do a Magic One Hello World, I discovered that my front panel wasn't working correctly. Uh, it took me a while to track down the problems. There were a few solder joints on the switches that had gone bad, and uh, but the biggest problem uh, required me to actually do some uh, rework on a couple of the boards to change some wires and move some things around. Uh, see, last year I finally fixed a Magic One problem that had been plaguing me for nearly all of Magic One's 20-year life. And then when I fixed it, I inadvertently broke the front panel's capacity to write to memory. Uh, it's now fixed, uh, but that caused a delay in, re in responding to David's request. And it also uh, caused me to reminisce a little bit about uh, the whole 20 plus year Magic One project. Uh, I've gotten a lot of personal satisfaction during this project of making and seeing new features work. Uh, it's fun when I get an old game working or add a spreadsheet or a new compiler. Uh, but I have to say that the most personally satisfying moments are when I track down and fix difficult and hard to find bugs. Uh, it's a little weird that I'm also the cause of all of those bugs, but we'll leave that aside for now. Um, sometimes the bugs are software problems, sometimes they're hardware problems, but learning how to use the tools to track them down is also a kick. Uh, like uh, the logic analyzer, signal tracer, oscilloscope on the hardware side, uh, writing special debugging aids and tests on the software side. And I also see this in my YouTube viewing habits. Uh, my favorite YouTube channels, such as Curious Mark, Jerry Walker, Adrian's Digital Basement, and of course, Usagi Electric, they, they focus on making old computers work again by tracking down and fixing problems that I really like watching and kind of and, and following along with those. Um, over my 20 years of journey with Magic One, I've tracked down quite a few interesting bugs. And it occurs to me that there may be some other folks out there who'd like hearing about uh, how I found and fixed those bugs. So if you're one of them uh, and would like for me to put together a video covering some of Magic One's uh, greatest bug hits, uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, but in any event, uh, thanks for watching.